components and their interrelationships. Although we have talked a lot about uh, these things earlier, but uh, we are going to get into some of the specifics, like, you know, uh, we have talked about portfolio as a system, common purpose of components, interrelationship among components, parent-child relationship. We have talked about all of these things, but let's see what's new. Okay. Uh, as far as the portfolio components are concerned, do uh, you tell me what are what are the various types of components which could be there in our portfolio? Uh, it'd be the projects, programs, operations mainly, and then the sub could be sub portfolios, uh, and sub programs, sub portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Only four things. Four things. Uh, sub portfolio, program, project and operations okay. four type of components. all right okay tell me what are the components of a program um it could be sub programs or projects sub program project and there are three components sub program project and could be operations nope operations is only in the portfolio oh. um Business objective? No. We talked about that and we discussed something about that. Program uh, activities. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Program Remember program. that. Yes, that is the operation of the program, but that is called program activities. So there are three components of a program and there are four components of portfolio. And uh, tell me, uh, what are what all are included in an OPM? That'd be the project, the program, and the portfolio. The management of all project management, program management, portfolio management. There is a fourth thing also. Operations. No. <laughs> <laughs> they are called organizational enablers. I said that is the glue which binds the uh, project yeah. management, program management, and portfolio management. So the four entities are there in OPM. Uh, and what is a OPM? OPM is a strategy execution, uh, strategy business execution framework, right? We had, what? we just talked about that. What was that anyway, organizational, that was the last one in the OP, OPM, organizational? Organizational project management. Organizational project management is a strategy business execution framework. Our OPM is a strategic business execution framework. Okay. So this is all available in the slides, but you know, I'm just highlighting those things which right. are really, really important. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the portfolio. A portfolio system is managed as an integrated whole relative to the other systems of the organization. It is a big system. Portfolio in an organization is a big system, but unlike other systems of the organization, this only deals with change related initiatives, uh, uh, accomplishing the strategic objective, right? You know, there are yeah. operational systems which are producing value. There are, you know, other systems, many other systems in an organization, but portfolio is a system within the organization, which is, as I said, is, uh, you know, kind of uh, as, uh, for the strategy execution. Portfolio system, portfolio hierarchy results in a parent-child relationship. And you know that you have portfolio, maybe sub portfolios under it, a program and sub programs under it, project and sub projects under it, and things like that and operations also that could be anywhere yeah uh, all these standards you have to refer to a guide to project management body of knowledge pmbok actually includes two parts one is called uh, the standard of program management uh, project management and the other is called what uh, a guide a guide to uh, a guide and the standard, right? There are two things. So I'm referring to the standard for project management, the standard for program management, 
द स्टैंडर्ड फॉर पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजमेंट एंड द स्टैंडर्ड फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट दीज आर द फोर थिंग्स विच यू नीड टू गो थ्रू इन योर ओन टाइम वेन एवर यू फ्री यू कैन जस्ट यू नो देर विल बी अ लॉट ऑफ रेपिटेशन एंड यू वुड नो इट बट वंस यू हैव गॉन थ्रू ऑल दीज फोर स्टैंडर्ड you will be completely equipped with all the knowledge maybe you know uh, you may not remember everything i am not expecting you to remember everything which i have shown you here on the slides right similarly you don't need to remember everything you just need to read things and try to uh, you know encapsulate them as much as possible uh, do not muck them up do not try to remember them but just try to understand them and i can bet that in your exam you will have absolutely no problem right because right. those those uh, uh, things you have uh, read they come back to you they come back to you in your exam yeah okay okay so uh, there are two types of uh, portfolios there could be larger portfolios the top level main portfolios and the subsidiary portfolios the larger portfolio Uh, can contain subsidiary portfolio naturally they can have subsidiary portfolios under them which in themselves are component collections so a uh, subsidiary portfolio could have their own program project and operation the subsidiary portfolio can exist for different reasons for example they they just could be a grouping like it projects on in one group and you know gas projects in one group and uh, construction projects in one group so they they are just management grouping maybe they are orchestrated or they are designed these portfolios according to the funding you say the funding group 1 is one portfolio funding group 2 is second portfolio funding group 3 is third portfolio yes of course For, from the customer requirement customer satisfaction portfolio customer production portfolio or something like that according to the requirements of the customer you could have your portfolios designed that way they could be according to the schedule you know uh, uh, maybe january port portfolio february portfolio march portfolio maybe resource related maybe you you can divide the portfolios according to the resources or according to the stakeholders or according to different sponsors or whatever way you want but that is about the subsidiary portfolio the larger portfolio is the main portfolio right Uh, that can uh, that encompasses everything all sub subsidiary portfolios and programs and project they all come under the larger portfolio program management um well uh, because uh, i i expect that you may not be able to go through the standard for program management the standard for project management so uh they have provided a lot of material with relevant material which you need to know and remember here in this standard in the portfolio management they have given the definition and a little bit of detail about program management here so what is the definition of program management as you remember we have already talked about program management is the application of knowledge skills tools and techniques to a program to meet the program requirements and to obtain benefits i would uh, underline this obtain the benefits because that is the main purpose of a program obtain the benefits and control not available by managing project individually if those projects were not part of the program uh, they could have delivered the deliverables but what about the benefits so so those benefits cannot be delivered without being in a program at least they will not be coordinated even if the, somebody else is responsible for each one of those benefits but you see that will not be a coordinated effort this is a coordinated effort program management so this involves aligning multiple components components that i am talking about the components of the program remember components of the program were sub programs projects and program activities so aligning multiple components to achieve program goals so what are the program goals there is a overall strategic uh, sorry there is a overall uh, 
benefit realization expected, which will fulfill certain strategic objective, right? Certain, not all, but certain. So program goal is to be achieved and allows for optimized and integrated of the whole whole program, the costing and scheduling. Yes, of course, you said that uh, these are the benefits that all of these projects within the program can be managed together from the cost, schedule, effort, or other parameters point of view. But you see, that is not the sole purpose of putting those projects together into a program. Program is basically, uh, you know, uh, for the purpose of the obtaining the benefit and control, not available by managing those projects individually. <clears throat> Although the benefits of a project often arise after the project ends, so this I'm not uh, I'm not saying that this is written in the standard. Every project, whether it is not part of a program, still it delivers benefit, but in a long run after the project has ended. After that, that project goes into operation and then it starts yielding those benefits. And ultimately, one day those benefits can be realized. And somebody should be responsible for that. If not a program manager, somebody should be responsible for those benefits. Some benefits can appear during the program life cycle as a single project within the program end. So uh, throughout the life of the program, some of the projects will be completed, some benefits would be realized and, and they keep getting realized until all the benefits have been realized and all the benefits are consolidated and delivered and then the program closes. Program is also a temporary endeavor. Program also will have to end one day. Although programs have a very long life, but still they end someday, just like projects. Projects have a short life, but projects do end someday. Programs also. Most of the people do not think that programs uh, do end someday because a program can be 20 years long, 10 years long, 8 years long. But uh, yes, programs also fulfill their purpose. They deliver their benefits, the overall benefit realization, and then they end. Portfolios never end. Portfolios never end. Uh, components of the program, I have already told you about that. Uh, relationship amongst the projects is only that of a shared client, seller, technology or resources. If that is the classification, if uh, in a program, all the projects uh, are uh, for the same client, or all the projects are for the same seller, or the technology or the resources, if that is the reason you are calling it a program, you are wrong. This is not a program. This, this type of classification uh, is the classification for the portfolio. As you remember, I said, that, you know, we can have the, uh, for the same client, all, all the projects for the same client can be grouped into a portfolio, right? So this is the definition of a portfolio, not a program. A program doesn't look like that, right? Yes. A pro program has some... Uh, benefit realization at the end of it. In program, it is important to integrate and control the interdependencies amongst the components, you know, as if we can, you know, uh, ensure that a roadmap the program has, uh, the benefits are delivered accordingly. And those benefits at the end of the day will contribute to the strategic objectives. Okay. Let's talk about uh, uh, the, the domains of the program. You know, uh, we have uh, the, uh, the, the six domains we have discussed of the portfolio. Uh, these are the domains of the portfolio. Strategic management, portfolio governance, portfolio capacity and uh, uh, capacity and, uh, capability management, uh, portfolio stakeholder engagement, portfolio value management and portfolio risk management six domains of portfolio management, right? And what are the domains of program management? These are the five domains of program management. Just for your knowledge, maybe if there is a question in the exam which refers to that, you must know strategy alignment, benefit management, stakeholder engagement, governance, and life cycle management. Program has its own governance, right? 
although many things are very similar like stakeholder engagement is very similar to our stakeholder management in the portfolio but program level uh, stakeholders are engaged in program uh, we do have uh, strategy management here in portfolio they have strategy alignment right uh, benefit management is unique to program and life cycle management yes in uh, in addition to the six domains of portfolio we have a seventh thing which is not considered as a domain that is called pro portfolio life cycle right but in case of the program management program life cycle management is our domain these are the five domains so you can write this down somewhere this is important information those six domains of the portfolio these five domains of the program just for the reference purposes maybe in the exam some question refers to these things right so these okay. are some things which you need to uh, jot down separately uh, structured governance framework uh, as i said the program has its own governance structure just like the portfolio had its own governance framework and if you remember the discussion i had about the governance i said there might be a organizational governance naturally the policy of the organization is encapsulated into the organizational governance framework uh, similarly we have the portfolio governance the portfolio will provide governance structure for all its subordinate components right similarly the program will provide a governance structure for all its components right so yes of course uh, <clears throat> program has its own governance structure uh, structured governance functions and domains structured oversight and governance in uh, where we have planning uh, control delivery transition and benefit sustainment uh, i don't want to go into the detail because you're not going for the uh, program management certification uh, if at all you were then these this was important information they are not going to ask you but these are the uh, 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 you know one two three four and five things which are in the structure oversight uh, structured oversight and governance of the program program management provides a framework for managing related efforts considered key factors what are that strategic benefits you remember uh, i have emphasized that in program strategic <coughs> benefits are benefit delivery benefit realization is really extremely important coordinated planning of course this is a big benefit a big advantage of uh, uh, doing things in a program complex interdependencies can be handled that may create new emergent issues and risk deliverable integration resource pool and optimized pacing so there is a mechanism of management within the program where we you know uh, resolve issues and risks and um, integrate various deliverables coming within the program and resource pools are being established uh, you know uh, we control the resources for various projects within the program and we try to optimize it anyways so that was a brief introduction about the program management let's talk about project management pmbok you have already uh, referred to it uh, you have already been qualified for pmp so you remember uh, the definition of project management is the application of knowledge skills tools and techniques to project activities project activities because the component of a project is a project activity nothing else project activities to meet project requirement that is a purpose why we we uh, do those project activities to meet project requirement by providing the project deliverable the ultimate output is the project deliverable right <clears throat> and normally uh, the uh, benefit is not really part of the project management, but um, in a way, I can say that uh, uh, some short term benefits can be realized during the life of the project. Short term benefit, but mostly there are long term benefit and they, uh, they get realized long after the project ends. So it is accomplished through appropriate application and integration of project management processes, which you have also referred to uh, those uh, uh, those processes identified by the for the project but remember whenever we talk about processes or process groups 
remember that is more likely referring to the traditional way of project management right uh, yes you must read through the seventh edition as if you are clear about the the agile and hybrid and uh, the traditional what what is the difference and how they interact but you know whatever you have studied and you have qualified for uh, is no more applicable except for the traditional projects only right if yeah. uh, uh, you are assigned a agile project and probably none of that pmb okay will apply to you uh, you have to yeah. refer to seventh edition for that but yes the specific project circumstances may influence the constraints on which the project manager needs to focus anyways managing a project uh, means uh, doing these things identifying analyzing documenting and prioritizing requirement is just a you know summary and just uh, quickly summarizing what the project management is so requirements then addressing various needs concerns and expectations of the stakeholders as the project is planned and carried out setting and maintaining active communication so communication is important everywhere communication in program in project in portfolio everywhere everywhere communication stakeholder is equally important balancing competing project constraints and you remember that there are uh, project scope time and cost and few other uh, you know constraints like resources and risks and all that successfully producing and handing over the project delivery that is all about the project management then the relationship the project management the relationships among these factors are such that if any one factor changes at least one or other factor is likely to be affected i think you remember from your previous experience if scope changes it may affect the cost or it, it may affect the time or it may affect the resources or it may increase the risk so all these various limitations which we just referred to may you know affect each other mm -hmm. anyways I, i would not like to go into the detail of all these things let us yeah. move ahead a uh, little bit about progressive elaboration although progressive elaboration was initially um, uh, introduced for project management but this applies to program management and uh, to some extent to the pro portfolio management also but bas basically this concept is uh, more akin to project management and i hope and i understand you know what progressive elaboration is Mm -hmm. uh can you tell me the difference between progressive elaboration and and uh, rolling wave planning uh, what was the second one was the second one? rolling wave planning um i'd say <coughs> rolling wave planning has more to do with um trying to figure out what the next step is or yes. trying to understand how to get to a solution where progressive elaboration has more of a circular life cycle i mean it's, it's never ending it's 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 it continuously iterative because there's no end point don't don't you think that they are almost the same concept progressive in a way yes they are same concept the only difference between progressive elaboration and rolling wave planning is that progressive elaboration is a strategic level concept at the project okay whereas uh, rolling wave planning is a tactical level concept both means that the things will become clearer in coming future and then we can plan them both means yes. the same thing okay but one progressive elaboration is at the strategic level that the overall a project you you say this uh, this project can be done in five phases uh, right five phases you can say but you do, you can't plan more than the first phase so let us go into the detail of first phase and leave out phase 2 3 4 5 for further planning right because we don't know much details about them so that is at the uh, strategic level at the tactical level uh, when we start identifying the activities within a project there are certain activities which can be comprehended there are certain activities we don't know they will be but what uh, could be there so if there is 
uh, lack of information in, uh, in t- at the tactical level and we don't know specific information about something, we start planning around it, leaving that as a black box and we can fill in the blank whenever the information about that becomes available. That is called the rolling wave plan, right? Although this concept is the same, but this is at a tactical level and progressive elaboration is at the strategic level. Okay. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so progressive elaboration involves continuously improving and detailing a plan as more detailed and specific information and more accurate estimates become available. Uh, then it comes to the concept which I just defined to you. Uh, the traditional project management you have studied is called predictive, right? And then we have got adaptive. And then we have a combination of both. The combination is called hybrid. Adaptive is uh, what we call agile. Agile, right? Yeah. Right? So uh, progress, progressive elaboration also applies to them, all of them. But specifically in adoptive, we are more easy with it. We say, okay, we don't know what uh, what to plan, so we don't plan at all. We don't plan at all. We only plan uh, in very small bits and pieces. We not even plan phase by phase, but we plan in um, you know kind of uh, uh, in small brackets of say one to two weeks only. So let us plan for two weeks, do the job, and then we will see what comes next, right? So that is the agile way of doing it. I'm not going into the detail of that. I don't want to explain that in in all complete details. But anyways, that is uh, the the concept of progressive elaboration is more uh, uh, minutely applied to the agile and it uh, lends much more flexibility to the agile system. And anything which could be between a predictive or traditional and agile method that would be called a hybrid which we are referring here as a combination of both yeah anyways right. so what does it allow progressive elaboration it allows us to navigate and adopt to emergent issues and risks things are changing to generate a suitable risk response plan and to manage a, manage to a greater level of detail as a project evolves so we can you know uh, continuously keep planning and improving uh, so that possibility is there due to the concept of progressive elaboration. Okay, done. Uh, then yeah. we come over to the fourth concept that is the operations management because operation is also the fourth component of the portfolio. So by definition, operation is a business function. This is not something which has to start and end sometime. Uh, this is a business function. Uh, and as you say, uh, this is something where the a value is produced. So these these are recurring activities. They are continuously happening activities. They are cyclic activities, and they uh, produce results. Like you know, we are in production, so the production uh, items are being produced. When you keep doing this, you items are being produced, right? So the value is delivered. Operation is a is a business function responsible for planning, coordinating, resourcing, controlling. The repeatable that is recurring, usually cyclic day to day activities of the organization. The business function is called business as usual, PAU. Now, operations management consists of various procedures and their assignments. These include, uh, you know, in operations, although we do delegate and all that in our project work also, but in operations, classically, uh, there are proper lines because there is a standard operating procedure. The governance is much more clearer, and much more standardized in operations. So they have got clear lines of delegation, clear lines of authority. They, are, they have got clear mechanisms for reporting, escalation, and etc. Because th- that all is included into a standard operating procedure, which is specific yeah. to operations. Standard yeah. operating procedure is specific to operations. So operation mm-hmm. management is much more organized from that perspective. Yeah. Okay, when 
and the ongoing pattern of activity is subject to change by external factors or when it may be improved by discretionary application of change then resources within the portfolio are diverted into programs and projects now this is very interesting because uh, operations do not inherently have the capability to bring changes to themselves therefore when the operations are invo in involved in a in a portfolio and there is a change required within an operation those changes are diverted to either the programs or project as if they bring those changes for the operation because operation doesn't have any vehicle to bring the change by all by itself operations are incapable of bringing change or yeah. in other words i would yeah. say an operation cannot change operation itself cannot change you need a project to change that, the operation uh, but it cannot change the change can only be brought through project the smallest unit of change yeah. is project and the yep. second bigger unit is the program either change is brought through a project or a program in an organization change no change can be brought without a project or a program yeah projects okay. may be further grouped as program naturally uh, and into portfolios because of a linkage among any or all of their schedule linkage means that they are they all are from same grouping or same categorization right so that uh, as i said in program management if things are looking alike they are all are white that doesn't make them uh, a program that makes them a group or a portfolio or, or a sub portfolio or something like that so if the things are alike they are grouped together thus grouping is simply a portfolio not a pro program yeah okay portfolio operation change uh, i i think you can go through this this is uh, not much of interest to us yeah portfolio of operational change of projects links a subset of recurring activities managed as a project with the organization study you can read it out uh, read it out and you, you can uh, find something if something is important but anyways i don't feel there is something anything very important there yeah okay we move on to the role of portfolio manager now uh, this is uh, interesting because it talks about uh, a lot many responsibilities are roles of the portfolio manager we have got uh, strategic and operational management we have holistic view of organization change integration with the organization strategy and all that but we are more concerned about the role portfolio managers may have the responsibility now this introduction is important to read but all portfolio manager as a portfolio manager i think you personally should be very uh, you know concerned about uh, all these points which i am going to be giving you this is very important for you as a portfolio manager so what are your responsibilities you have the responsibility for the establishment and implementation of portfolio management so as a portfolio management you have to uh, create the framework of portfolio management you have to establish and implement portfolio management right where program and project managers primarily focus on doing the work right right whatever work is being given to them they are trying to do it best the portfolio manager due to his capabilities of prioritization and selection of various projects and programs he is deciding what to work doing the right work right i hope you understand that that is really yeah. very important so pro Oscar portfolio Oscar. manager doing the right work right not doing the work right <laughs> projects and programs are doing the work right whatever work is given to them they are trying to do it right but here you have a choice portfolio manager decides what to work and what not to work doing the right work only not the wrong work yeah and we can say the portfolio governance enables the right work that you know the word right work what has to be done that comes from the principles established in the portfolio governance so portfolio governance enables the right work to be performed at the right time 
and with adequate resources allocated. So portfolio governance is giving you a complete framework that this right work, uh, when it should be done, a roadmap is available, when it should be done, and how much resources are required for that. And as a portfolio manager, you will ensure that all the components get their uh, relevant required resources well in time. A governing body establishes the governance of portfolio programs and projects by setting guidelines for them as well as linking them to the organization strategy. That is the most important thing that they have to be linked to the organization strategy because if they are not linked to the organization strategy, what kind of an organization is that? Where the people are working for uh, with no clear objective, everything should be aligned with the organizational strategy of the organization. And then there should be a mechanism for verifying the overall result and portfolio does that. Portfolio ensures that whatever has been done has been done right. Furthermore, portfolio managers are responsible for ensuring proper communication and coordination. As you remember, we have emphasized a lot on communication. So communication and coordination is again, a lot of communication and coordination is portfolio manager's responsibility. What else? Often plays a number of important roles. Now there are three roles defined here and there is a fourth one also, but primarily there are three roles for a portfolio manager. Portfolio manager is an architect. Portfolio manager is an enabler. Portfolio manager is a facilitator. As far as architect is concerned, portfolio manager works with their organization counterparts to evaluate the portfolio management plan, assess and define the needed skills, design appropriate processes and adjust these processes accordingly. So he is an architect, he designs, he plans and he does all that. As an enabler, he seeks ways to continually improve, improve the applied portfolio management process and adjust portfolio components toward better alignment. So he enables for continuous improvement, continuous improvement. Rather, uh, as it says, continual relevance to the organization because we are more concerned about the organizational study. It, th whatever we are doing should remain relevant to the organization. If it is no more relevant, then why should I be enabling it? And as mm -hmm. a facilitator, in the execution mode, portfolio manager manage the day-to-day -day operation of the portfolio management process. So these are the three roles. And the fourth role, which uh, will come subsequently, is called the analyst. In some organizations, there, in addition to the portfolio manager, we have a portfolio analyst. Or maybe, you know, portfolio manager is doing that job, but if it is a separate person, that can also be there. Anyways, we'll talk about that later. But the portfolio manager roles also include conveying to the portfolio governing body how the portfolio components as a whole are aligned and realigned with the strategy goal. So you are answerable as a portfolio manager to the governance body. You are answerable all the time how you are doing your work, how you are aligning everything to the strategic goals and you have to show the results all the time. So in a way, I can say that your boss should be asking you this question in every meeting. This is something which you should be doing all the time. This is your primary duty. Capturing the portfolio impact and value creation against strategic directive, right? I think this is self-explanatory. What is the impact of the portfolio? And how much value it has created, right? Against the strategic directive. What was uh, assigned to you? How much have you achieved? Providing appropriate recommendations or options for actions wherever required. Influencing and managing the process of resource allocation. Big work, resource allocation, because you, as we said, you are busy all the time managing resources, allocating resources, 
analyzing situation, prioritizing, and you know, balancing, and things like that. So resource allocation is one of your big, big responsibilities. Overseeing or coordinating with portfolio component managers on implementation. Receiving information on portfolio component performance and progress and ultimately reporting portfolio progress to the top management. So these are some of the portfolio managers responsibilities. Although there is a lot of material here, the portfolio manager reviews the portfolio for balance. Just remember that uh, we, we did talk about it. Uh, you have to balance your portfolio all the time. Then it's a sequence portfolio component that is prioritization. Then timelines for portfolio management processes are maintained and followed. Managers of portfolio components uh, uh, you know, that was the first one was the uh, portfolio man. The roadmap is created by the portfolio manager. So timelines for the portfolio management processes are maintained and followed. Whereas your subordinates, I mean, the portfolio company, the program managers and the project manager and all that, they receive and provide the information required under the portfolio management process. You as a portfolio manage, man, manager, are primarily conduit between the managers of the portfolio component and the portfolio stakeholders. So you would shuttle in between these two entities. Mm -hmm. Communication, naturally, we, we understand that and uh, what kind of communication, deciding when programs and projects should proceed, uh, when they should be deprioritized, when they should be changed to adopt to strategic changes, when they should be terminated when they should be suspended before the originally planned completion date. So all these decisions are coming from the portfolio manager. So this is very much and not only that the decisions are coming, but you are also responsible for regularly communicating these information. Portfolio manager also makes appropriate recommendations to portfolio governance bodies regarding specific directives for components and improvement of portfolio practices toward ensuring that the in intended value is delivered to the organization. So our report reports have to be submitted to uh, to the higher uh, uh, echelons to show that you are consistently, uh, you know, uh, uh, increasing the value of the business, improving or uh, contributing to the intended value. Okay, portfolio manager needs to be aware of how the portfolio is related to the organization vision, mission, and strategic goals. Just go back to that vision, mission diagram and see. Uh, you have to go back all the time to that diagram and ensure that you are aligned. Identify, assess, and measure the business value all the time. Time and again, this is something you have to keep doing. You know. Uh, that is where you will identify that maybe there is some change uh, in, the, in the direction of the organization and you may have to fix things. So nobody is going to tell you that uh, the, there has to be a, the, a new strategy has come and now you should realign things, but you are supposed to keep an eye yourself on all those things. Throughout the portfolio life cycle, the portfolio manager should be uh, able to manage risks, monitor and prioritize portfolio components, resolve issues that need senior level attention, develop and improve processes, and apply organizational knowledge and management skills. In addition, uh, should be able to effectively manage the organizational resources. Naturally, we talked about the resources and communication and stakeholder. So this uh, one point is about all that. Uh, Okay. Uh, classically speaking, uh, these are, uh, uh, as a portfolio manager, lead expert teams. You can lead expert teams and have expertise in all of the following areas, right? You should have expertise in all of these areas. And by the way, most of these are the same areas which we have already been talking about strategic management and alignment naturally this is one of the domains you have portfolio management methods and technique this is not a domain but naturally 
all of the methods, techniques, and tools used in the portfolio, uh, the 75 tools which I had mentioned to you earlier, you must be very well aware about them. This is definitely uh, a portfolio manager should know. Stakeholder engagement, naturally, this is a domain also, and we we know a lot about it, but naturally, this is a stakeholder le level we are talking about. Leadership and management skills. You remember, uh, we had grouped the portfolio manager's uh, expertise in these uh, uh, 10 different areas, and there we had uh, many, many skills mentioned. So leadership and management skills were mentioned there. Risk management, we have talked about. Organizational change management, very important, and system thinking. Um, as far as the strategic management alignment is concerned, uh, probably we have talked a lot about it. Uh, portfolio managers should understand monitor changes in the organizational strategy. As I said, it is the responsibility of project portfolio manager to keep an eye on the changing strategy of the organization and objectives and be aware of how the portfolio supports them. Both financially and non-financial benefits and risk to the organization need to be considered. And so on. Methods and techniques, I think uh, we have uh, mentioned that. Stakeholder, leadership. Uh, just look at it. In leadership skills, you have got recruitment and retention, goal setting, performance evaluation, reward and recognition, succession planning, employee development, uh, and so on and so forth. In employee development, you have got mentoring, coaching, motivating, training, and so on. And, you know, then we have got risk management. I don't think you need to um, re repeat that, but you see um, cost benefit analysis, window of opportunity, all those concepts you uh, already understand about risk management. From the point of view of portfolio, you have to be very vigilant about them. Change management is something uh, very uh, important here. So an effective portfolio manager should manage the impact of change on the organization. Change readiness is measured at the portfolio, program, and project level. In each case, the level and range of metrics will be different depending, for example, on the system, the technology, the stakeholders, the deliverables, the expected benefits, etc. Anyway, now system thinking. I think this is something uh, uh, very important. Uh, do you have any idea what this system thinking thing is? Must have. Understanding the portfolio components? Uh, yes, that may apply there as well. Uh, naturally, wherever there are components, an organization has many components, have many parts which work together very effectively. So, Basically, if I, I don't remember actually who gave this idea, uh, but I have a book of that person. Let me. Uh, or, uh, or, I, I just uh, I'm not uh, able to remember the name of the person, uh, but you know, system thinking was the idea. The whole organization, no matter in how many parts it is divided, in how many components it, it is divided, all should think uh, think alike right? you know they should be they should be capable of understanding each other each group should be capable of understanding each other group so well that their thinking is alike right or if at all uh, uh, they have difference in thinking when they uh, you know exchange idea they adopt ideas from each other and they become one, right? You know, yeah. they have the yeah. same thinking mechanism. This approach relates to understanding how different components of the portfolio are interrelated and interdependent of one another. So because they are interdependent, they are not enemies. They have to work together. So they have to develop a coordination, a, a, some kind of system thinking. It can connote the ability to think through which portfolio components should be selected to contribute to the organization strategy as a top-down approach. Now, this uh, if each group is thinking, uh, um, uh, is making a decision on its own, then probably there will be many decisions. 
but there will be no consensus right in a uh, uh, there is a very related uh, in the in the same book where system thinking was introduced there was another concept of um, learning organization a learning organization is that is just like artificial intelligence a uh, system of the organization is such that whatever they do they keep learning out of it as an organization not as an individual and there is a is a consciousness at the organizational level rather than at the individual level and yeah. that is a kind of a, a common brain for everyone and then everyone thinks alike i don't know if i could convey this uh, this idea to you or not yeah but since the thinking is yes please Yes, I understand. Uh, I, I, yeah, I remember the name of the book. The book is the fifth discipline. The fifth discipline. Okay. I am not remembering the author, but if you write it in the Google, uh, you will find the book, the fifth discipline, and that talks about system thinking. That talks about uh, uh, learning organization. Lot many other things. Lot many other things. I think this is. Uh, a much better a book than uh, um, uh, seven habits of effective people i think seven ha habits of effective people is absolutely nothing in front of the uh, knowledge encapsulated uh, encapsulated into this book the fifth discipline right. uh, if i remember the name of the author i'll, I'll give you that yeah hey, i look it up here is peter singe ah peter singe peter singe thank you yeah. sorry yeah wonderful book and a wonderful author a systems approach may facilitate the proper selection of necessary components to execute the portfolio aid with proper resource allocation and ensure that the selected components are aligned toward achieving the business goals of the organization now you think you see um, uh, uh, the things have become become uh, automatic and you can uh, uh, after having I talked about all many so many things um, all the subsequent slides we have we we start feeling that thing we know and we uh, we are just kind of doing the repetition or further elaboration of a same concept we already know right that is exactly at the level of consciousness i wanted to bring you because after having gone through all this now we are comfortable with portfolio management this all the subsequent chapters you will be very comfortable it will be very easy for you to understand all the subsequent chapters this first chapter that is why this is the reason why this chapter was so very important for yeah. for, for us to explain in so much detail why yeah. we went into things word by word that is that is the reason anyways there are many other roles beside the portfolio manager are alongside the portfolio manager which we we will see uh, in the portfolio like you know we have got portfolio sponsors we have got portfolio governance body portfolio manager interacts with all of them then we have got the pmos of the portfolios or programs and project uh, then we have got the uh, portfolio analyst that was the role i was mentioning to you that could be a separate person then we have got uh, the program managers we have got the project managers we have got the ch change control board uh, program and project team members are there they are also stakeholders and then we have got the subject matter experts business analysts functional managers so these are all the different roles beside the portfolio manager are these are the people with whom the portfolio manager has to interact a lot some organizations employ a portfolio analyst this is what i was mentioning some organizations have a separate portfolio analyst who works closely with the portfolio manager and the epmo so i would say this is a bridge between the pmo epmo epmo is not a normal pmo it is a executive pmo or enterprise pmo so uh, between the portfolio manager and the epmo this could be a conduit the portfolio analyst the responsibilities of this if if this person exists to identify and track interdependencies between portfolio components and facilitate their resolution management at the portfolio level 
and identify portfolio management process gaps, recommend improvement, and help implement them. I'm oh, sorry, this is, you said executive enterprise, portfolio, enterprise, portfolio, enterprise, yes, sir. enterprise project management office. So this role uh, can be combined with other roles, any other role, and tailored to meet the organization needs. So uh, there is no specific, uh, you know, necessity that this role has to be there. Maybe the portfolio manager himself serves as the analyst. Maybe some other role uh, acts like an analyst. Uh, maybe you have analyst. Maybe you don't have analyst. Doesn't matter. But anyways, this this is what we need uh, the, uh, this person to to be doing. Further, a number of organizations have a change control board. Uh, then we have got a standing committee. We have the project with governance committees. What are they? So change control board that works in practice as a standing committee for project, right? So this change control board is basically the standing committee for the for the projects. I mean, uh, I, I'm talking about the projects of the port within the portfolio projects yeah. and programs within the portfolio so the change control board of the portfolio may act as steering committee for the project in many organizations splitting responsibilities between project sponsors and the project steering committee and the portfolio governance is an important issue now this we are not uh, we are really talking about it but naturally uh, uh, in small organizations where there are not many uh, people involved, men, not many stakeholders involved, project sponsor deals with everything. In a little larger organization, we may have a steering committee helping uh, uh, with that. But in very large projects, we uh, may have governance bodies or for that matter, uh, if we have got a portfolio, the portfolio governance uh, could be there. Okay, very briefly, uh, let us discuss these roles. Sponsor, I, th I think you understand that there is nothing new. A sponsor is a personal group who provides resources and uh, are sports, uh, support for the portfolio. So um, I would say sponsor is any, uh, anyone who is uh, kind of uh, uh, concerned about, who is uh, kind of a patron to the project, who uh, supports the cause of your, your initiative or whatever. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it could be a group, it could be a person. If it is a group, then individual accountabilities should be clearly defined that, okay, this group is sponsored, then there are five individuals who are responsible for this group, and these are the accountabilities of these each one of these persons. If it is one single sponsor, naturally all the accountabilities will be held by the sponsor himself. The portfolio sponsor usually participates in the portfolio governance body. So basically, it's not the portfolio manager. Portfolio sponsor is like a boss to the portfolio manager, and he is one of the members of the governance body of the portfolio. Again, portfolio governance body is senior to the portfolio manager, right? And in a way, pro pro portfolio sponsor is the boss of the portfolio governance body, and naturally other executives would be included in that. Sponsors are accountable for resource allocation and enabling success. Sponsors champion, as I said, they are the patrons, they are the champions. They champion the approval of our portfolio and our portfolio component. So basically, they are the people who allow for the chartering of various projects and programs within the portfolio. And they are also accountable for the ultimate success of the portfolio. Uh, at the portfolio, Spencer is a champion. Once the portfolio component is approved, the sponsor helps the portfolio manager. I mean, a uh, sponsor is uh, uh, glued to the portfolio manager all the time. Naturally, he has to take the credit for all the success. So he is involved in every decision making the portfolio manager is taken. So you can take this person as the boss of the portfolio manager, right? So uh, portfolio manager works very closely with this sponsor. Then the governance body, as I already said, uh, is naturally the boss of the portfolio manager is the head of the portfolio governance body and other executives are sitting in the portfolio governance body. So portfolio manager is basically reporting to this governance body and the governance structure for the portfolio is developed by the, them, the rules and regulations, all that. They may be suggested by the portfolio manager, but they approve. 
this governance body approves that governance plan and then based on that governance plan the portfolio manager then creates the portfolio management plan the port all the management plan no matter it is a program management plan or a pro project management plan always is based on the governance plan so at this level portfolio governance is being created by this committee and uh, after this governance plan is approved that becomes a, a, a basis for development developing the portfolio management plan right so uh, portfolio manager creates that portfolio management plan leadership and sponsorship for the portfolio governance body are essential for the portfolio manager but as i said portfolio manager is subservient to them and dependent on them so uh, this body is very important to the portfolio manager they are the bosses portfolio governance body is made up of one or more individuals with the requisite authority knowledge and experience to ensure the alignment of portfolio components with the organization strategy so i would that's why i said they are the high executive people i mean they are uh, uh, they have got power they have got understanding they have got knowledge they have got authority so these are the people who basically uh, can sanction things for the portfolio manager uh governance body yeah i think we should skip that uh portfolio program and project management office i suppose uh, you might have heard about it as we just mentioned enterprise project management office there is a concept of a portfolio management office a program management office a project management office uh, do you understand the difference between these different kinds of management office um i believe so i, believe. I mean the clearest one would be the project management office but i say usually the portfolio management office is i guess in my case at least is more integrated into the the corporate or headquarters that that really sponsors yeah. all the projects that happen yeah exactly but you see uh, we do not need to confuse a portfolio management office with a project management office um or if you are running a project management office you just can't promote it to a program level or to a portfolio level simply because the responsibilities are very different at a portfolio management office uh, 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 the management office the, the pmo at the portfolio level is not going to look at the progress of each project and the program they will not do that they will look at it from the interest of the portfolio the portfolio is interested in other things like organizational strategy like assessment they all of these things so this pmo is going to help that's why we said ex enterprise pmo enterprise pmo is the most suitable one which is even above the level of the portfolio management office that is at the level of the enterprise that is even uh, you know at the level of the governance body right so right. portfolio management office is a office which uh, may not be much concerned about uh, how the programs and projects are being run but they are more concerned about uh, portfolio level decision making a program management office is usually uh, you know existing within a program to manage all components of the program for for easier management of for the program manager a project management office could be central in an organization for uh, you know supporting all various projects being run in the organization or there could be a project management office within a large project also but that office would be specifically looking after the interest of only that project because that project is too big and too complex right but anyways from the portfolio point of view uh, we have listed down certain responsibilities and look at uh, uh, these you can read through them but generally i'll read out one odd uh, 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 initially uh, for example this will help the portfolio manager in identifying analyzing coordinating negotiating monitoring and controlling portfolio component right because this is a portfolio management office so it would be uh, providing help at that level you know the no, a, a pmo a project management office 
how that can help in portfolio management they don't have knowledge and expertise in that area yes of course i can i understand if there is a, a knowledge and expertise available and the level is portfolio uh, portfolio management office that can handle things at the project or program level also but that should be within the uh, within the responsibility of that specific ma management office so uh, we won't like an enterprise management office to be looking into the minutest details of projects or programs a portfolio man management office i would classically think that that would provide support for the portfolio responsibilities only but anyway i do understand that in most of the organizations uh, they don't have this uh, differentiation they just have a pmo and that does everything right so we need to correct that a little bit maybe we can we need to educate them a bit more uh, but yes uh, a portfolio management office is uh, a very different breed so developing and yeah. maintaining portfolio program and project frameworks and methodologies managing knowledge regarding project management discipline providing you know you know what a pmo does so uh, for whatever is the relevant level for, for that level it establishes the rules and establishes the pro policies and procedures and uh, looks at all those things and looks at the interest of all uh then what then what then we have uh, program managers program managers are responsible for ensuring that the overall program structure and program management process align with the portfolio management plan so we are looking at it uh, the role of program manager from the perspective of the portfolio manager so for program managers uh, specifically uh, are responsible uh, they ensure that these processes that their processes are aligned with portfolio management program manage, manager ensures the program delivers the intended benefit as if as you understand uh, program is concerned about benefits only but those benefits should be aligned with the organizational strategy put that is the responsibility of the portfolio manager portfolio management supports the program manager by providing the information needed to make decisions that guide the program by providing administrative support in managing schedule budget risk and other areas required for effective program management you see um, as i said earlier it is not your responsibility to run the program or to run the project but you can always mentor them guide them so this is what it is saying uh, in uh, by providing information information not doing their job information needed to make decisions that guide the program it's a kind of a mentoring service you are providing so portfolio manager should not stoop so much down that he starts doing the work of the program manager or the project manager that is beyond uh, much below uh, the portfolio manager's responsibilities so he should be a good mentor he should be um, always ready to help provide support advice information and all that uh, um, in all matters in all matters but at the same time don't do their job this is strictly prohibited even in program management it says program management manager is not a project manager he shouldn't start doing the project manager's job let the project manager do his job and program manager do his own job a program manager works with the portfolio manager the portfolio management team and are the portfolio management office to provide information such as program performance against goals whatever goals have been provided whatever kpis have have been provided uh, in accordance to that they provide the program performance to the uh, to the portfolio similarly we have got project managers again the same kind of responsibilities project managers are responsible for effective initiation planning execution monitoring and control and closing of their project within the portfolio in accordance with corresponding objectives and specifications and blah 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 all of that thing just as you know but it is the project manager working uh, under the portfolio manager okay i am done with the matter any questions so far no. chapter 1 i understand okay. Yes. Okay, some understand. little very easy questions for you if you do not have any questions. Do you? No. 
Should I proceed? Yes. Okay. Some instead then go to very simple, small little questions. We'll quickly go through them. There are seven questions and I'll show you uh, and I'll seek your answer. What is the primary focus of, a port of portfolio management? A. Completing individual projects. B. Aligning projects with organizational strategy. C. Reducing project cost. D. Increasing team size. What do you say? Uh, I say B. Good. B is the correct answer. Portfolio management focuses on selecting, managing, and overseeing projects or programs to achieve specific business objectives, aligning them with the organizational strategy. So organizational strategy is the key. Alignment to organizational strategy, that is a key role. So you must always remember that. Second question. Portfolio management is often compared to the role of A, a team leader, B, a ship's captain, C, a project manager, D, a CEO. Uh, B, once again. Very good, a ship's captain. Portfolio management is like being the captain of a ship navigating through a vast ocean of business opportunities and challenges ensuring the selection of the most valuable routes and cargo projects and program strategy. Third question. What is the key role of portfolio management in organization? Number um, um, alpha, micromanaging projects. B, focusing only on short term gain. C, reducing the number of projects. D, ensuring strategic alignment. Say D, strategic alignment. Okay. You see, I have, uh, you are right. Um, I have strictly prohibited of micromanagement, whether it is program <laughs> management or portfolio management, you should yes. not micromanage, right? Yes. So yes. A can never be right. And B and C are also uh, not right. So D is the right answer. Portfolio management ensures that an organization strategy is translated into actionable projects and programs, aligning them with strategic goals. Question number four, portfolio management optimizes A, individual performance. B, short-term profit. C, resource allocation across projects. D, project methodology. Uh, I'm going to say it's between C and D, so I'm going to say C. C. You yeah. see, um, why not D? It says project methodology. How it has nothing to do with the project methodology. Project methodology. <laughs> He cannot be correct. So a crucial role of project uh, portfolio management is the efficient allocation of resources, time, money, people across various projects. Question number five. Which of the following is a key responsibility of a portfolio manager? A. Detailed project planning. B. Strategic decision making. C. Direct team management. D. Technical project execution. I'll say B, strategic decision making. B is the only correct answer. Portfolio managers are responsible for strategic decision making, including deciding which projects or programs to start, continue, or stop. Six, question number six. Portfolio manager acts as a bridge between whom? A, different project teams. B, project teams and top management. C, competing project. D, external stakeholder. I'm going to say B. Yeah, B, but this was a very tricky question. B is the yeah. correct answer because... <laughs> that was uh, less clear to me, yeah, B. Upwards and downwards, yeah. yeah. Okay, we are done with the questions. So, before uh, we leave, these are the three questions for you. Uh, in whole of this today's session, what are the two points that stood out for you? Um, <laughs> it's funny. So this this session, my 
I have clarity on my confusion. Let me put it that way. Um, so here's here, here's my challenge. My specific title, my title is mm -hmm. Senior Project Manager Engineering. My okay. role in the organization, so that, that's my title, Senior Project Manager. Uh -huh. My role mm -hmm. in the org chart, when things get sent to me, I am portfolio manager in the org chart. And I have project mm. managers who report to me, and I report to mm. the director of engineering, the, the director of engineering. And so the thing that stood out to me definitely the most is that I, I have confusion <laughs> when in my head mm. on when I'm doing a certain task, which hat mm. I have, because I have both, I have both roles. <laughs> And so right, right, right. I, I need to clarify, it, it is very clear to me that I need to clarify within my actions which mm -hmm. role I am feeling when I'm doing a certain task because I, I, unlike, unlike somebody who has the clear role of portfolio manager, I mm. indeed have both. <laughs> and so I have to clarify in certain roles I'm doing one and in certain tasks yeah. I'm doing another. And I'm probably right now not doing enough in the portfolio manager role. That, that That's clear to me right now that I have a lot more to implement because I would say the definition of a portfolio manager is not clear in my organization where it's probably defined as in the org chart, I'm defined as a portfolio manager because I am over a lot of these projects and I have a lot of uh, project managers reporting to me, but I don't think that's the role that's defined in the practices that are expected of me. However, uh, what stands out is that in order for me to achieve the next level, I need to implement the portfolio management processes more than I am right now. Actually, this is not only your problem. This is a problem with most of the organization. Mm, they uh, they have yet to embrace the role of portfolio manager. Yeah, they yeah. they don't want to give a big name uh, to the uh, to a person. They will give you. They will promote you to the level of senior project manager. Why couldn't they promote you to the level of a program manager or a portfolio manager? What is the problem? Well, because because they don't we don't understand. <laughs> We don't yeah. have it. So if we talk about levels, we don't have yeah. we don't have a level, a title. When we talk about titles, we don't have a title of anyone in our organization that is portfolio manager. The title for us okay. goes from engineering, project engineer to project okay. manager to project manager level two to director. I mean, that that's the jump. It's, it's project okay, manager to senior project manager to director. So the portfolio manager is not in our titles or in uh, our levels. So okay. when, when I say that's my title, that's my title mm -hmm. because that's my level and that's my role. However, okay. Okay. when we look at the org chart, the org chart mm -hmm. we have for our floor says, mm -hmm. Um, we have, uh, it's a bit of a matrix, so we have an execution and a support, so we have subject matter experts, we have um, engineering managers, we have project managers, and the project managers report to me, and my title on an, organ my title on an organization chart is portfolio manager, so even within our <laughs> project managers, our project managers have different levels. So I have mm. I have on the org chart, they all show up as project managers, but even within my project managers, their title, their titles different differ from senior project senior project engineer to project manager to senior project manager. Mm. But on the org chart, they are project managers simply because they manage each project. And they roll up to me as portfolio manager because I and responsible for all the decisions that get made over all uh, the projects and all the programs within that portfolio. And so from that mm -hmm. perspective, from the org chart, I am portfolio mm -hmm. manager, but by definition, 
that is not the exact <laughs> definition of a portfolio manager. What I believe okay. the definition of the portfolio manager is, is really my director because he is directing the floor of portfolios. So, and, and, and that's why, that's why I say when it's confusing, I, I am clear, or I say I'm clear as I've started to look at this PFMP material, you know, in January, I am clear on what the role on the portfolio manager is. But as I, as I take that and I look at what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to be doing, the next level that I'm trying to get at, that's really what the portfolio manager definition is. So that's why I say when it's mm. confusing, I'm clear on the delineation of the roles. But if the confusing part is when I say, you know, what am I doing great and what am I not doing uh, as great? It deals with the fact that mm. my title is both. <laughs> I am both senior <laughs> project manager and I am both portfolio manager. And so I need to be more, I 100% need to be more um, strategic in the task that I'm doing. And when I'm doing this task, that is mm -hmm. this role versus when I do that task, it is that role. And that's where the, mm -hmm. there's too much, I say right now, there's too much overlap between those and they are not one role. They're two distinct roles that I'm doing both. <laughs> I just need to delineate the task to say, it's not my role as I do a daily and a weekly task that that's my encompassing role. No, it's got to be consistent with this or consistent with that. I need to do both, but I'm not doing both at the same time. That's what I need to do. That's what I need to understand <laughs> more. I'm not doing both at the same time. This task contributes to supporting the senior project management role or it contributes to supporting the portfolio manager role. I, that's what that's what I got to do both. <laughs> <laughs> I think this discussion answered all of these three questions. Yeah, that's the first two, and that, that's the first. That's the third one also. <laughs> implementing, implementing different things. Yeah, I, I agree. But anyways, these are the three questions you should, uh, you know, um, at every interval you should answer uh, these questions. Maybe to yourself, uh, and that will serve to improve uh, uh, your way of working in the next uh, session. So yes. we are now going to be meeting on the next Sunday, same time. And we will start with chapter number two. This is going to be portfolio life cycle. We are going to start. So anything you need to talk about before we can break off? Uh, yeah, actually, I do have a question. So I, I, I do some traveling from the 27th of June until the 14th, let's say, of July. Uh, is, is there any way, and I, ideally, I'd like to wrap up the sessions before I leave. Is there a way to add a session before the 30th of June? Because I won't be able to make that session. What, um, is, what is the next date of the next session? Next the next session, session next is Sunday. on the 16th. So we go 9, 16, 23, and 30. Okay, okay, okay. So and you so want the, the which session to change? If it's possible to move up the 30th session, that would be great. If not, we, we'd have to postpone it. But just for my mm -hmm. progression and studying and learning, uh, it'd be great if I could wrap it up before the, the trip. But I know that it's a long session, but uh, just. Which day suits you? I'm open. Uh, I, I know the time difference. It's Monday right now for you, I believe, or Sunday night. <laughs> Monday, uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. no problem. It's Monday for you right now? What, it's I, Monday right now for you. Is that correct? Uh, no, it's not yet Monday. 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, it will be Monday. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, I'm also I'm also free on the you know the 15th or the 22nd. If if we could, I know that'd be. Uh, it'd be almost a full weekend. Uh, Let me have a look at the calendar. Or if it had to be a Friday, I, I could check my schedule. If it, if I may be available on the uh, 14th or the 21st, if that's if that's available, I can check my schedule. Uh, you are saying on 30th, you don't want to attend. We can do it on... Uh, 
what about friday 21st yeah let me let me check that, that that'll work that'll be available so if we can do 16 21 and 23 i'm oh, sorry nine oh today's nine sorry 16 if you want 21 to, if you want to, 23. want to put a little yes. gap in it let's make it 20th thursday so 16, 20, 23. Um, 20, 21 is a little better. Yeah, if, if 16, we can do 21. 20, uh, 21 is better? OK, 16, yes. 21, 23. Yes, that'd be great. That'd be great, good. OK, great. That, so that, just that inform helps. Dr. Faz that the class, which was on uh, supposed to be on 30th, is uh, to be shifted to 21st. OK. Right. Dr. Fan, let me see if I have that. Um, I'll also tell him. I'll also tell him. Faz, OK. I understand. Yeah, I see, I see, I see the name. Faz Razul. Faz, uh, Faz at uh, pmtrainingschool.com. Yes, OK. All right. Just leave him a message. Great. And I will talk to him. Okay, I think that's the main thing. Uh, that would wrap up the four sessions before the 27th, so that, that'd be great. Yeah, that would be better. That'd be much better. Okay. That just give me a clear delineation uh, switch into the next yeah. step instead of instead of having a two to three week gap and then exactly. doing the last session. Exactly. And so, yeah. I will, I will ask you uh, to, you know, give yourself some time to prepare very thoroughly. You know, this lecture, yeah. they, this, these sessions are okay. But you need to give yourself a lot of time before sitting in the exam. Because this is a tough yep. exam. I, I believe you will pass in the first attempt and uh, definitely you will pass. But there is a high likelihood that if you are not really very uh, well prepared, uh, you may not. Right? So you don't want to take right. any chances to be very thorough and prepare very well. Yep. And uh, clear this in first attempt. That would be great and we'll celebrate. <laughs> 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 Definitely. Hopefully. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a very nice session. I don't know. I had been talking and uh, uh, I, you were just on the listening end most of the time, but it was really nice talking to you. And uh, I suppose uh, next session will be even better. Yeah, I definitely learned a lot in this session, so I appreciate it. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye.